so disappointed and nervous. What should I do? You'll do make a mistake someday. It was just horrible and overwhelming experience. It was a mess. Hello, hi, I'm Captain JK. Good to see you guys. For those who don't know me, I'm Boeing 787 Captain. Today I'm going to talk about how good or bad for pilots to transit from one another. If you have seen my previous videos, I've been going back and forth between Boeing and Airbus, which is not very ideal. Starting from MD-80, which you know is almost like Boeing aircraft. About two years later, I moved to Airbus A330. And then I became a captain on Boeing 737. Having spent about three years there, I moved to A330 again as a wide body captain. Now, I've been a captain on Boeing 787 for four years. I've already introduced the difference between these two manufacturers. Yes, they're quite different. Then Boeing to Airbus or Airbus to Boeing. Which one is going to be harder to get in terms of transition training? One day in 2011, one of the first officers who was about to transit to wide body fleet was complaining about him having to take Airbus A330. Captain, I'm so disappointed and nervous. What should I do? What do you mean, what should I do? He seemed that he had to turn himself into like an astronaut or something. Hey, you know, I've flown Airbus A330 for more than nine years. And before that, I flew MD-80. You're gonna be doing the same thing as I did. A330 is just one of the airplanes. You don't have to worry too much. But as a professional airline pilot, jumping from Boeing to Airbus or the opposite didn't look so good for pilots. There are quite many things to get used to when you get into transition training from Boeing to Airbus or vice versa. Okay, let's start with small things. In terms of switches, up on is the Airbus planes as opposed to up off in Boeing. Switches in the cockpit tend to change from toggle types to push buttons or rotary types. But we have still some toggle type switches which you have to do with exterior lights or sometimes seatbelt signs depending on what aircraft you're flying. This opposite way of switching makes no critical issue even if you make some mistakes. But remember, you will do make a mistake someday even after you get used to new one. I'm not going to say which one's better since this is a matter of getting used to it. Having said that, if I really have to pick one, up on would be the victor which makes more sense to me. FMS This is the flight computer called flight management system, which is essential to modern aircraft. This is one of the biggest things that you should be able to handle well as soon as you can, especially if you're a first officer. They seem quite similar to each other, but they have huge difference in terms of how to use. I personally think that the Airbus one is going to be easier to use and more intuitive once you get the hang of it. But I guess it may take more time for Boeing pilots to get used to it than the opposite. Auto thrust versus auto throttle. This system is to automatically control the engine thrust as required. Most of the time in the air, it controls the aircraft speed. As for good feature of Airbus Auto Thrust, it is a little more precise than Boeing one. But the lever never moves by itself. It's fully manual. During takeoff, a pilot should set the thrust lever to its takeoff position manually. And once the aircraft is airborne, the system controls the engine thrust automatically without moving the thrust lever. It stays right there all the way down to landing. Unlike this guy, Boeing's throttle is always moving along with the engine thrust. This means pilots can override it anytime they want without disconnecting the system while Airbus One doesn't allow pilots to do so. Considering this feature, I suppose Boeing's throttle looks more intuitive. 
MCP versus FCU. This is the device that is the most frequently used by pilots during flight. You can simply call this autopilot control panel. It enables pilots to control the aircraft by changing the modes of the autopilot. This is somewhat easier to get used to than any other devices because the function keys are almost identical with each other. But you're going to be careful. I just said almost, not exactly. Sometimes it might put you in the wrong spot where you don't want to end up. For this item, going to Airbus is a bit easier to get used to than the opposite. Now it's time to deal with the biggest one. Control yoke versus side stick. One day in 2000, I was in the um, Airbus A330 simulator and it was the very first training session of mine. Without having anything between my legs, it made me feel really odd at first. And when the instructor got me flying manually, it was a mess. At the moment, I could not seem to fly even basic things like level turns, climb and descend maneuvers. I remember that it was even worse than I tried to fly a Cessna 172 during private pilot course. It was just horrible and overwhelming experience. I got all sweat, fighting the side stick. Hey, JK, let go of the side stick. Uh, excuse me, sir? Trust me, just let go of it and see what's gonna happen. As soon as I did what he said, the airplane magically stabilized by itself. I found myself fighting the side stick with the way of Boeing's yoke. At the end of the lesson, I realized that I had to release a bit of pressure out of my hand on the side stick. Once you try to grab the side stick like this, you might end up over controlling the aircraft. Never ever fight the side stick unless the weather gets really rough on the approach. You need to keep in mind that the amount of pilot's input on the side stick requires a lot less than Boeing's control yoke. Personally, I would say Boeing pilot getting used to the side stick is a bit harder than Airbus pilot getting used to conventional yoke system of Boeing. My final verdict, in every aspect like cost or time saving, also considering the safety matters, it's ideal to fly the airplanes from the same manufacturer. But we sometimes have to unwillingly fly the airplane, which we don't want. Okay, my personal opinion goes like, Boeing to Airbus is a bit harder to get through than Airbus to Boeing. Today, I've brought up pretty interesting subject for aviation enthusiasts or even real pilots who are about to step into transition training. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you for watching and I'm Kevin JK. Bye-bye.